Okay, so now that we have established what determines how much money we want to hold, which is the number of transactions or interest rate in bonds, let's try and calculate the money demand. Now, what will determine your money demand? There are two things basically that your money demand depends on. Now, we have already talked about the interest rate. So if the interest rate is very high, you don't want to hold a lot of money, a lot of currency, let's say. But if the interest rate is very low, you may be willing to hold a lot of money. The second thing is our nominal income. So obviously, if you have a lot of income, you will hold more money than compared to someone who doesn't have a lot of income. That's a pretty straightforward thing to understand. Now, what I want you guys to think about is over here, why are we using nominal income and not the real income? So this is something I'm not going to talk about now. I want you guys to think about, and it, it's not that difficult to figure out, but you will have to spend a few minutes at least thinking about it. Okay, so let's come back to money demand. So money demand, what we've seen is a function of interest rate and the nominal income or in the book you will see it's written in this format you have your real income times a function of i it can be any function so an example might be y times 0 0.2 minus 0.8 i and this is our money demand. So if we take a look at this, what do we see? What we see is that nominal income and the money demand are directly related. So as your income is going up, your money demand is also going up and that should make sense to you. Uh, someone who doesn't earn a lot of money might have a few hundred, at most a few thousand taka in his pocket. Someone with a lot, a bit more money will maybe has 5,000 taka in his pocket. Someone who's very rich might easily have hundreds of thousands of taka in his pocket. I mean, I say pocket, I basically mean you have it, have it as currency. Maybe you have it at your home. Maybe you have it in your checkable deposit account. But effectively, the more money you, the more income you have, the more money demand. The second thing we notice is that income, uh, sorry, interest rate and money demand are negatively related. So this is negative and this is positive. And we have talked about why this might be the case as well. Basically when interest rate is high, you want to put more of your money as bonds because then you can earn that high interest rate but if you're holding it as money, you don't really earn any interest on money. Okay. So let me write this down again. So money demand is equal to this Li. So this is an important equation. So from here, let us try and construct an, a diagram. So, along the y axis, I'm going to put interest rate. So, that is i. Notice what I'm doing is for interest rate, I'm using small i. That is because we have already used the big i for investment. So if, if I were using the small i or the big i for both, I mean, it would become confusing. 
So when you guys are, let's say, answering questions in your exam, just make sure that you don't end up using the same notation for two different things, or it, you'll get confusing. And I may misunderstand what you're trying to say and deduct marks, and that's you know, a hassle. All right, so in the x-axis, I'm going to have m. m is for money. And money demand is basically going to look like this. What does that mean? It's very simple. So let's say at this level of interest rate, money demand is this much. If interest rate is going up, as we would expect, money demand is going down and vice versa. Uh, similarly, notice that there are two things that affect our money demand. One is I and the other is Y. What would happen if our income went up? Effectively, this. So we have ND2. And what we see is that at the same interest rate, money demand has increased. So initially, at this level of interest rate of I2, our money demand was M2. But now, because we have more money, more income, Y has gone up. At the same level of interest rate, our money demand has gone up to M3. So if some of you are struggling to understand what's going on here, remember what you have already learned in, uh, in ECO 101. So there are two things. One is increase or decrease in demand. And then there is something called an increase or decrease in, in quantity demanded. So effectively, that's what's happening. When interest rate is changing, we are experiencing a change in quantity demanded of money. But when income is changing, we're experiencing a change in the demand of money. If you don't remember this, please go back to your 101 notes and revise.